What's up guys, it's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity build a video. Today I wanted to use this person's experience as an example to show you guys the common mistakes that players make when they begin playing the contest of mayors, okay? So the very first thing is going to be figuring out if you are a high or a low level player. A lot of people have this misconception that high or low level player has to do with the actual number that like if it if you're like level 50 or higher then that makes you a high level player in the contest of mayors it is broken down into what assignments that you currently have available to you and which assignments you do not currently have available to you as a lower level player you do not have certain assignments that other players may have so you have to determine which level those assignments pop up things like regional assignments those pop up at level 25 if you decide to unlock a regional which means that is something that you would not have if you were below level 25 that makes you a high level player so if you are level 25 and have a regional map unlocked you're a high level player if you are below level 29 below level 30 okay and you do not have a regional unlocked, that makes you a low level player. Because what this means is it that you have all the same assignments that low level players have, minus the couple of production tasks. You do not have Omega and you do not have regional assignments. The moment that you unlock Omega, which is level 30, or you unlock a regional, that is when you become a high level player, okay? So now that you've determined which level player you are, you need to determine if your city is actually capable of competing on a pro level. In order to compete properly, you have to have a certain amount of storage. I would not even attempt to play high level comm, depending on how many regionals you have unlocked, without anything less than four to 500 storage. If you're somebody who is level 30 and you have barely 200 space, you need to restart your city immediately. It's trashed, okay? Now, the benefit is that there's going to be a lot of people that are level 30 that have garbage storage capacities. So if you can dominate the leaderboard, you're going to win every time, right? The level 30, 40s, and 50s leaderboards are easy to win because people have terrible cities. In order to be able to do any assignment that comes your way, you have to set your city up and set your city into a position where you can do that. Many new time players or new players, I guess I should say, they don't prepare their cities properly, okay? What I mean by that is this. They don't have enough cash. They don't have enough storage. They don't have enough tokens. They are not in a club that does war. And that is a big one. That is a really big one, okay? Um, so now you've limited yourself to only being able to do, you know, assignments that are not war. And a lot of those premium assignments are war. And by premium, that means that the assignment can be worth up to 3,000 points. So now that you've determined if you're a high or low level player and you have put yourself in a position where you can do any assignment that comes your way, okay, now comes the fun part. You need to educate yourself on the contest of mayors. The number one mistake that players make is they do the assignments that come easy for them. They do the assignments that they can do. Now, think about it like this, okay? This person here, if you look at uh, what he said, he said, this is basically what I'm working on now. I can easily do neo Simoleons, expand storage, and trees. I don't know what he means by trees. Oh, saps. Okay. So what, what was his first se sentence? I can easily do. Okay. That is not how you win the race. If the goal is to score as high as possible within 75 assignments, 60 tasks plus 15 tickets, if the goal is to score as high as possible, do you really think that if you say, you know what, I could have done this assignment for, let's say, 3,000 points, but it would have taken me a little more effort. Instead, I decided to do this assignment for 1,500 points. 
do, who do you think is going to win at the end of the race? The guy that took the easy route all the time, that did what he could when he could do it, or the guy that said, you know what, it might be a little bit more difficult for me to get this done, but this is the correct choice. Who do you think is going to score higher? Now, how do you determine what is the correct choice? Because here's another big myth. Just do your highest assignment. That is the myth. Never, ever, if anybody ever tells you to just do your highest assignment, they don't know their head from their ass in the contest of airs. I'm sorry, they don't. They don't know a damn thing, okay? Assignments are broken down in many categories. First, you need to know what that assignment has the ability to be worth. Knowing what the assignment can be worth has everything to do with if you should complete it or if you should not complete it, right? The next thing that you need to know is how frequently that assignment will return. So if this assignment can, let's just say, let's say an assignment can only be worth 1,000 points, so something like a war booster, and it has, hypothetically, it does, this is not true, but let's just say it was. Let's say that the war booster came back at a high algorithm rate. Technically, it does not. It comes back at a low algorithm rate. But let's just say for the purpose of this example that it comes back quite fast. If that is your easiest assignment and you do it and it comes back for a thousand and you do it again and it comes back for a thousand and you keep doing it just because it's easy, just because you can, what do you think is going to happen to your score? It's going to drop, right? Yeah. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to determine what? The value of the assignment that is currently in the list, that is your current status column. The, uh, the predictive column, which is gonna tell you what that assignment has ability to be worth and what you know about that assignment in terms of algorithm and in terms of the, pop, the probability of kicking back a good task. Now, I've done all that work for you. I've put all of that data into a chart, a contest of mayor's quick, you know, sheet, cheat sheet thing. All you have to do is take your current list, go through and mark up your list with the data that I've supplied you. Okay. So you're going to go through and you're going to mark everything and you're going to say, okay, this is non-premium, cannot be worth 3000 points. Uh, he is high level players. So shop productions are non-premium. The storage is premium. Now he is using cash because he has a lot of it to do the storage. So when he says, I can easily do expand storage trees and neo simoleons. Well, then the answer is pretty simple, right? Storage is 3000 points. It has a high algorithm and you can easily do it multiple times. So go ahead and do it. Now, if he couldn't do it multiple times, then eh, you might want to wait until after you know, you've done most of your assignments, as this assignment comes back frequently, it could block up one of your good doorways. Okay? So educating yourself is essential. Now, let's move to the next big mistake that people make. This here is a list of assignments that this player has made that they have completed. This information is useless absolutely useless and it actually takes more effort to do this than it does to do it the right way. So what you need to do is you need to get the right information. Okay, this tells me nothing. All it tells me is the assignment that you did at some point doesn't tell me what assignments you had in your list when you did this assignment. It doesn't tell me how many assignments you had remaining when you did this assignment. I mean, not unless I'm going to sit here and count it. Um, it also doesn't tell me what doorway any of these assignments belong to. So let's just say for the purpose of this, that he does the expand storage, okay? I don't know if he moved doorways to do the, the expand city. I have no idea. For all I know, he switched doors. Or for all I know, the expand storage was somewhere else. Well, okay, he did list it one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I don't know if that means, okay, no, that's just the number of assignments he's completed. Okay, because 
goes to 20 and there isn't 20 in a list. So I have no idea of knowing if he has switched doorways or not. And that is essential. Now that information, all of that information is easily taken by just a simple screenshot. All you have to do is screenshot the top and bottom of your list when you select the assignment that you are completing. Okay, just like in my walkthrough videos. When you do this, it'll tell me which doorway you're on, what your doorway average is, what your current average is, the time you had remaining. If you put in your screenshots, you know, when war is going on or whatever, that'll also give me more information. But just looking at this, it's very difficult. I can tell you that he made a big mistake. Look at this one, two, three, four. The third assignment that he did was a earn coins task. Yeah, an earn coins task. That is a non-premium assignment with a high algorithm rate. So it is an assignment that does not have the possibility to come in for 3,000 points. In fact, it is below 1,600 points all the time. And it has a high chance of coming back. Now, why do you think he did that? Probably because he had a milestone, right? So something that he could have gotten credit for up above without having to screw his list up down below, he chose to do the, the coins. When he, What he should have done is he should have done his milestones as needed, but not chosen the task down below just to pair it with a milestone. You never do that, ever. Okay, now if it happens to be the correct choice and you happen to get credit for both, fantastic. But never sacrifice points just to get credit for something you could have gotten credit for and left the sacrifice down below, right? I mean, think about it. I, the best way that I can explain this to you is this. If you have to walk through a casino to cash a check, okay, do you have to take that check after you cash it and deposit money into the slot machine? No, you do not. You do not have to make that sacrifice, okay? You can just simply go in, cash out your check, and walk out. You don't have to sacrifice anything at all. Here, he took a sacrifice he didn't need to make to do a milestone assignment. There's no reason for that whatsoever, okay? So now what else does this cause? Because we know this assignment will return, what risk did he take with this? Well, he took less points, so he lowered his average. We know this assignment will return, and now he has shifted the weathering system of his week. He has shifted the outcome of assignments he's going to get. What else did he do? Now, if he does locate a good doorway, and if he says, well, you know, this slot on my list is the good, is the good slot, now he has this stupid task that has a high risk of returning, coming back and covering up that good spot. And if that happens, what do you think has to be done? Do you leave it there and continue to do assignments on a bad doorway and lower your average consistently throughout the entire week? Or do you say, all right, that's my good doorway, I know that's my good doorway. I know if I don't uncover this good doorway, I'm not going to get any good assignments for the next 40 assignments. I have to do this assignment again, which means you have to take a hit on your score again. But what does that mean? That means that assignment can still come back. So now you have to take more hits on your score to try to get it back onto a different doorway, thereby changing the outcome of the assignments you're going to get, changing the weathering system again and dropping your score significantly again. And in hopes that you can get it back within a few assignments, go back to your good doorway and make up for all those points that your one mistake fucked up. These mistakes are huge, okay? So after he does the simoleons, he does repair disaster for 1600 points. Now, again, he's a high level player. I know that within four assignments, he had not already rotated all of his premiums. The order of rotation for high level players, you do your main premiums or non-premiums first, okay? Not specifically in that order. 
I mean, there are things you still have to break down, like which one's higher, which one has a higher chance of returning. There's a whole list of criteria. But in general, you're going to start with your main premiums or non-premiums first, okay? Once all of your main tasks are done, now main tasks are assignments that are in your list worth at least 2,000 points. Once every assignment that is doable for you, and by doable, I mean if there is any way possible you could get it done. So like the storage assignment, if you can't do that, that you have to leave it to sit, okay? Um, anything that's doable. Now you say, okay, all of my 2000 point tasks have been dealt with. Every single thing in this list is below 2000 points. From here, you say, okay, now which one of these tasks has the ability to be worth at least 3,000 points? 3,000 points or higher. And you start with those assignments first with the breakdown of their highest algorithm. For example, Omega for 1,000 is below the 2,000 threshold and has the ability to be worth 3,000 points. Paris 1,000 upgrade has the ability to be worth 3,000 and is 1,000 points. Does that mean, because they are equal in value and, and they are both premium, that you should do either one? Absolutely not. There is a, a order in which you would do them. Which one has the highest likelihood of returning? Omega has a higher algorithm than Paris does. So you would do Omega first because it has a higher chance of coming back, right? And that's what you want to have happen. You want that Omega to come back for more points, right? Okay, so you've done the Omega, and now you get, let's say, a 1,800 saps task, or an 1,800 chairs. It is still below main task threshold, okay? And that is a non-premium assignment for high-level players. Most people would say, oh, it's 800 points more, I'll go ahead and do it. Absolutely not. You go back down, you grab your next premium, you do the 1,000 Paris, Okay. Those doorways should open main tasks and they should get you rolling through those doorways and then you go back down, you grab your premium. If that does not happen, you have now opened up all premium possibilities and now every single thing in your list is a non-premium. It does not have the ability to be worth 3,000 points. You have no more premiums, got it? No tasks, 2,000 points or higher. At which point you only have non-premium assignments. Okay, now what should you do from here? From here, you say, okay, are any of these located with a doorway that has been good to me? For example, has this doorway carried me for 15 assignments with all main tasks? That's gonna be significantly important, right? And if you don't have your screenshots to go back on, you're not gonna remember which doorway it was. If that is not the case, or even if it is the case, you still have more criteria you have to break down. So you say, okay, out of all of these non-premium assignments, which one has the ability to be worth the most points of these non-premiums and which one has the lower chance of coming back? So you want the highest non-premium with the lowest chance of coming back. For example, repair, 1600. That has a high chance of coming back. It is not main task value. So if you think about it, repair comes in for 1,200, 1,600, 2,000, right? Okay. So what are the chances that you get the repair for 2,000 each time it comes in? Probably really low, right? So you're taking a 400 point hit on your score for a, a assignment that has the ability to come back very quickly. But you say, but Missy, I just did a 3KVU or a 2KVU and, and this pairs with that. Therefore, it's easy for me. It's convenient for me. Who cares? Convenient doesn't win. Convenient doesn't give you the most points that you need to win, okay? The guy above you didn't take what was convenient for him. He said, you know what? That might be convenient but it is not gonna get me the highest score. What can I do on this list that may be less convenient for my gameplay, but make me score higher? 
it's it's really a, a very simple process. People have followed Build It With Smith and Samantha, and they have watched these complete idiots say, just do whatever you can do on your list. Look at Look at their game. They don't play the game. They work for the people that made the game. They're setting you up to do bad. They're setting you up to lose because when you lose and when you invest, what happens? Cha-ching! You pay money. When you win constantly and you don't invest, you don't pay them money. They don't want that, right? They, they do not want that. It's not how this works, okay? Do not listen to them. They are not scoring anywhere. They're not even playing the game, much less scoring high. I mean, seriously, come on. Okay, so here uh, he did a 1900 ornaments. Now, at the time, that was the correct choice. I know because I had talked to him. Look at here again. Look at this. So let's count. Uh, Simoleons was at 13 tasks, or wait, sorry, three tasks. The, the third task that he did and the 13th task that he did. 10 assignments later, he did the earned coins again. I don't know when it came back in because I don't have the screenshots. All I know is that he did it again. Well, what happened? If you need to run about a 2K average and he's doing an assignment for 1,500 points, that's a 500 point hit on his score and he just did it again. That's a, a huge problem. Seeds means he junked feed to do seeds. He junked six hours worth of production to do seeds. And if he didn't junk six hours worth of production and it wasn't there, then he screwed up that way too because it should have been there. Okay, so here uh, he does the cargo and the earned simoleons. He had just done earned simoleons. Non-premium. Took a hit on his score. Comes back, does it again. Takes another hit on his score. That is not an assignment with a high algorithm, so that tells me it's a repeat task. And if it's a repeat task, that means that it's gonna have high algorithm this week, which means that you need to leave it alone. Okay, you need to work elsewhere. So let's see what else this I, okay, so right here he says, I got this animal feed floating, so I may as well knock out. Ouch. He had feed in his list for 1,200 points. And he said, I might as well get it done. I might as well take an 800-point hit on my score. I might as well clear out six hours worth of downtime. And I might as well <laughs> make it to where... If this assignment now comes back, which it did not have the possibility of doing while well, it was sitting here, but now it has the possibility of, if this assignment comes back for main task value, that is a 12 hour downtime for me. 12 hours of just sitting there twiddling my thumbs because I decided that I wanted to take an 800 point hit on my score just because I might as well. Really? There was nothing in your list that you could have done as a high-level player that would have been better. You had feed secured for a low value. It was of no risk to you. It was not going to come back for more. It was not going to cause you to take half a day off. And you just opened up the possibility of that happening by gaining yourself a whopping 1,200 points. Yeah. That's the risk category. You have a whole list of criteria that you look at before you make your selection. Risk is one of the biggest categories you need to look at. Value is another one. Value, value opportunity, downtime, doorways, algorithm, risk, value possibility, history. I mean, Uh, okay, so from here, this, I got a screenshot, okay? So, look it. Omega has been sitting there for some time. Omega has the possibility of coming in for 3,000. Feed does not. Omega can be done with the quickness. Feed cannot. 
okay? Let's look at this here, okay? So this did Neosimolians and animal feed got this. That is the, literally that phrase right there is the one thing I cannot stand people do to me when I train them. Did this, did this, got this. Don't care, don't care, doesn't help me. It means nothing to me at all. I don't care what you did. I don't care what you got. All I care about is seeing your list. I want to see the list. I want to see what was there when you made the choice that you made because maybe Neo Simoleons was correct. I don't know. And without being able to see the assignments that you had at the time that you made your selection, I have absolutely no way of knowing if it was the correct choice or not. If I do not know how many assignments you had remaining at the time that you made your selection, I have no idea of knowing if it was correct or not. If this was your last assignment and it was the highest one in the list, risk does not matter. History does not matter. None of that matters because it's value over op. Value over op occurs when you are on your last 15 assignments, whether it be 15 assignments or 15 tickets. If you do not plan to use tickets, which I never recommend for anybody, then it's your last 15 tickets. Okay, so I have to know how many assignments you have left, and I have to know the surrounding assignments that you had when you made your selection. For example, did Neo Somalians and Animal Feed and got this. So if I look at your list right here, you did Neo Somalians, which tells me, because I know that task cannot be worth 2,000 points, you took an assignment that you had already completed already taken a hit on your score and already returned and you took another hit on your score i have no idea where it was located on the list but i know it was there at some place okay and it gave you the london for 2000 points because it's below the candy canes so you got the london from the neo simoleons at which point you ignored your main task for 2000 points and did animal feed for 1200 you reached down on the list, changing the weathering system of your week. After you had a main task already in the list, and you took an 800 point hit on your score and caused the chances of that assignment causing you half a day's time to come back. And it could come back even more than just once. After you did animal feed, you got 2,400 on candy canes. So now the candy canes become the correct choice, right? Looking at this lit, well, unless you can do the storage, which if that was the case, you should have done that ages ago. When you did the neo simoleons, what did you have in your list? Let's say that you couldn't do storage. What did you have in your list at the time you did the neo simoleons? You did not have the London and you did not have the candy canes, but you did have the war deliveries for 1500. That is a premium assignment. You do your highest premiums first, right? So if you're not in war and your club is not in war, you are failing. You are not putting yourself in a position where you can get all of your assignments done. You are putting yourself at a disadvantage. That is not a good move for you to put yourself at a disadvantage. Now, the first thing that you do if you are not in a club that does war or if your club is out of war at the current time that your assignment pops up, you then immediately go check the monster, okay? And see if he's in your city or if it is a cheap uh, cost for you to bring him in, you know, 40 bucks or less. If that is the case, you pay the cash, you bring in the monster, you do the damn assignment that you need to get done done. In this case, you chose to do a non-premium. After you then got a premium main task. You then chose to do another non-premium feed because you're a high level player, so on premium with a high risk. Okay. At which point you then got another main task, the candy canes. Now, assuming that you have the sugar, because you're probably not going to find it on global. Assuming that you have the sugar to make the candy canes, you now have at least what? Four hours of downtime running gold tokens. That sucks, which means you're idle for the next four hours. You don't have a choice, okay? So what I would do if I was you is I would prep 
whatever. I don't know what else is in your list because I can't see the whole thing. If you have sugar at the bottom of your list for a low value, don't prep sugar. Prep textiles. Okay, something that matches up with the four hours downtime that you're going to have to be in. Something that is not in the list for a low value. You're not going to do sugar if it's in your list for a low value. Textiles, I would prep those. Get the candy canes done, see what comes in. If you do not get a main task on the candy canes, then you immediately move to the Upgrade London for 2000 Although, I will say this. If you don't start playing correctly, it's not even going to be worth it for you to even do any assignments. It's just going to be a cost. It's really important that you learn what the assignments you know, can do, what they can be worth, and what their risks are. If you operate under the assumption that you just do every assignment that comes convenient to you, you're going to score about probably 60k lower than you should be scoring. Now, I'm not saying you're going to lose. That depends on, you know, what your leaderboard is, of course. But when I see somebody who's level 30 and their highest score on their leaderboard is 140,000, yeah, you may win because a bunch of idiots are playing with you. Like, they, they have no idea what they're doing either. That's my point. That will not last you forever, okay? You have an advantage of being able to play with people who have no idea what they're doing. Give it 20 more levels, <laughs> and you're not going to have that advantage anymore. Or make it to where, you know, maybe this week you get somebody who knows what they're doing. Right? And they just wipe the floor with you last minute. So in all reality, what you want to do is you want to always do your best, score your best. That way, when you get in with people that actually know what they're doing, you have enough experience with how to prep your list, how to choose your assignments, how to set your city up. You have that experience so you can actually dominate those leaderboards. You should not be scoring anything less than 200 to 220,000 as a high level player every single week, okay? If you're scoring like 140,000 as a high level player, you are failing miserably. My low level players score almost 200,000 every week. People who cannot do upgrades at all. People who have a hard time doing factory productions. So as a high-level player, there's no excuses. Okay. Hopefully, you know, you guys understand now the gist of, you know, the vast majority of, like, what new players do wrong. Another common mistake is going to be not putting yourself in a position where you can do every assignment, but... Not just war-wise, like shops, uh, tokens, all that stuff. Most of you guys just kind of start the contest of mayors without prepping your city at all. You know, you don't say, okay, well, I need to prep my shops. I need to make sure that my inventory is properly prepped. I need to make sure that I have, you know, all of these things in my inventory that are going to be of use to me not fill your inventory with burgers and cheese fries and ice cream and TVs and bulbs. That's all garbage. That's all stuff you can get on global. It is of no use to you. Uh, and it should not be taking up your inventory space. Okay. When it comes to milestone assignments, if you make it halfway through the contest and you have not completed at least two of the milestones above, you need to get some of those moving through so that you can get the other ones rolling in, okay? You want to earn credit for them as you work on assignments you would already be doing. You do not want to make a sacrifice on your score to complete a milestone, okay? So let's say you have cargo in your list for 600 points, and you have cargo up above, and you know, you know that no matter what happens this week, you're not going to be doing that cargo assignment down below at 600 points, and you're a high-level player. There's no reason why you would ever go that low as a high-level player, for the most part. So you've already decided that that assignment is not something you're going to be doing. But now you say, well, I got a milestone for it. I might as well. No. Just do the milestone. Leave that assignment to sit. Don't let that screw you over. Don't let that take a hit on your score. Okay? 
if you want to do the milestone, great. But then you need to ask yourself, how many of these levels of this milestone am I willing to invest in? Is it necessary for me to invest X amount of Sims cash doing X amount of cargo for X amount of points? Is it necessary? Or do you have a ridiculous lead on the leaderboard? Is it something that you need to sacrifice for? If it's, if it's like, well, I could be winning 2,000 Sims cash if I invest 100, then obviously it's worth it. But if you're going to win that 2,000 Sims cash regardless if you invest that 100, then probably not invest it, right? So you need to determine which assignments are worth it and which assignments are not worth it. If you don't think you can win and you have already invested so much into your week, you need to ask yourself, is it worth it? Do I opt out now and take the loss on what I've already invested? Or do I continue to invest and take a lower prize? And you also need to take into consideration that you cannot be stingy with your tickets. Okay? You do not want to lose the last 30 seconds because somebody has a bunch of unclaimed milestones and you thought, well, I had a 10K lead. That's not enough. 30K is not enough. Okay? The next thing that a lot of you guys do, another big mistake a lot of you guys make, is you do not move quickly enough. In fact, that's probably the one of the biggest mistakes is that you guys will spend the entire five days trying to uh, complete assignments. And when that happens, that means that you have to make choices you would not normally make because you are not in a position to take downtime. Um, it also means that your leaderboard, the people know that they might have a chance in winning, so they're going to keep trying to win. Whereas if you were to put your points up faster, they may have just opted out way early on. So you actually make more competition for yourself by going slower. And, you know, you have to take into consideration that the slower you go, the less time you have to recuperate and replenish your inventory, your coins, your tokens, or whatever. It is a big, big hit on your score. I mean, you may have to take the whole next week off just because you drug your feet this week because you don't have the coins. You don't have the, the inventory. I mean, you literally just finished and you have like a day and a half before the next contest begins. And you're like, well, I'm going to have to take this whole next week off. So by dragging your feet last week, you're now missing out on the entire prize next week and taking a risk that someone's going to beat you because you're dragging your feet. Taking a risk that you can't do those assignments because you drug your feet. You move quick. You do the correct choice at the time. You prep as best you can. to That way you can get those correct choices done as fast as possible. And you educate yourself on what those correct choices are so that you can dominate the leaderboard. That is how you be pro. Anything below that, I will not train. Okay? If you come to me for training, it's in my Patreon. It's eight bucks a month. That is what I expect of you. I don't expect somebody to say, well, I got two assignments done in three days. No. That's not what I'm training people for. You can do you can do bad on your own. I'm not trying to get you to do bad. I'm trying to get you to do good, okay? So watch the videos that I have up, watch the Contest Mayor's Chart videos, the Calm Guide 2022 videos, learn how to do a task assessment, learn what doorways are, doorway averages, uh, how to flip a doorway, how to break down a list, watch the Calm Math videos, the Contest Mayor's School videos that I have up with the whiteboard, those are really informative, and you know what really cracks me up, you guys? Check this out, okay? The very first thing that I do with all my training people is I say, okay, I want you to do a task assessment. Here are the comm charts. These comm charts tell you the answers. It is literally an answer sheet. It tells you on there what assignments are premium, what are non-premium, what are high premium. It tells you on there that anything that is doable is what, you know, you're going to mark it like, like this or that. 
anything that is rotatable, you're going to market this or that, you know, whatever. It tells you everything you need to know. And I cannot tell you how many people will say, okay, here, here's my task assessment. And every single week, there are mistakes on it. Every single week. Are you kidding? Like, you have the answers in your hand. How are you doing this bad? Come on. I, it doesn't get easier than that. I'm literally giving you the answers and telling you to copy them and bring them back to me, and you can't do that. If you cannot do that, you will not be able to win. Not like a pro, anyway. I mean, you may be able to win against a bunch of complete idiots, but... Point being, you will not be able to win consistently for a long period of time. Once you actually reach the point where you're in with people who know what they're doing, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. So what I would do is actually, you know, if you want to be good and you don't want to waste a week of your time every week, because <laughs> it's a lot, it, it literally is, it's a full-time job to play the contest of mayors. If you really want to be good at it, you got to give it your all. you got to actually try to understand the material, okay? and the importance behind why you're marking the assignments the way you're marking them. What makes this assignment more important than the next? And once you can do that, then great, you'd be good to go. Okay, once you know like, hey, this one can actually be worth 3000 points. This one cannot. This one comes at a higher risk than this one does. And you're just breaking it down into subcategories. And you're just taking the one that has the higher probability of bringing the most success. That is the goal. You do not take the lower probability. And here's where it comes into, here's where things get confusing for people. If you come to me and you say, Missy, what is the correct choice? And I say, A is the correct choice. Okay. And I say, A is the correct choice because it has a 90% chance of success. Does that mean that that other 10%, if you do B instead of A, does that mean you will not have success if you do B? There's still a chance you'll have success if you do B, but you have a higher chance of success if you do A, right? Well, you don't listen, and you do B, and you fall into that 10%, saying that it's 10%, saying it's not 1%, and you do well. And then you say, well, last time when I was faced with this situation, I did the opposite, and it worked out well for me. So now you say, you know what? I'm going to take my chances again. And I'm going to roll the dice and hope that I fall into that 10%. And then you don't. And you fail. So now you have one victory and one fail. Right? So now you're faced with the same situation again, and you fail again. And then again, and again, and again, and again. And eventually you realize, okay, maybe that wasn't the correct choice. Maybe Missy was right. Maybe I should have done A. So now, every time you're faced with that situation, you pick A. And 90 per, you have a 90% chance of success. You see where I'm going with this? Just because you pick the wrong answer and get a good result does not pick, mean that you pick the right answer. That is what I'm trying to say. If you pick, let, let's say when he did the, the coins. Let's say that he fell into a percentage of situations where the coins doesn't come back for the duration of the contest, which is extremely rare. It's like 2%. I mean, obviously, it didn't happen to him, right? He got him right back. But let's just say he did. Let's say he fell into the category where that those coins did not come back, he located a good doorway, and he, that doorway carried him for 20 assignments. Okay? He's going to then think that every time he is faced with that situation, he should do that to have that outcome. That is not what's going to happen, though. Almost every other time he does that, he's going to fail. Just like what happened here when he did the coins and it came right back and he lowered his app. That is what happens typically to everybody. So just because you fell into that 1% once doesn't mean that you did the right thing. Okay, it means you got lucky. That's what that means. We're operating under a higher probability and saying, okay, out of all the things that we know, this is the best chance that we have to score the highest and the highest chance of success. Anything that deviates from that is considered to be a mistake, whether or not it has a good or a bad outcome. Okay? So learn what the mistakes are and don't make the mistakes.
if you do the right answers and you get bad results, that is when you say, am I operating under that 1%? And then you go to that 1% and you operate under that as that being the correct choice to do a doorway flip. But that is still correct at that point because all the other doorways are not good for you. Okay? So try to learn the, the sequence in which you rotate and watch the walkthroughs. The problem is a lot of the walkthroughs ha are for streaks. And the streaks, because they were streaks, they were, a you know, you had to arrange your list a little differently than before. So some of those walkthroughs may be confusing for you guys, um, you know, because of the risk with the streaks and all. But in general, most of it is the same. Okay?